all right. Let's make sure everything's working here. Okay, this is uh, flat on pilot edge, and uh, we are at uh, L52, which is Oceano County, and we're on pilot edge today. Hey, review, good to see you, how are you? I want to make sure that the uh, switching of the views is working. Should be. Let's just uh, double check. Yep. That seems to be working. Okay. Gary Beck, good to see you. Or Gary Beck. So we're going to be making a flight today uh, VFR. We're going to fly from Oceano L52 to New Kiama L88. And then we're going to take off and we're going to go up to San Luis Obispo. These are the first two flights on Pilot Edge, the Cat 1 and the Cat 2 ratings. And it's where it all began. I thought it'd be fun to go back and do it again. I'm, I'm getting this static. I'm going to just see if I can fix it. I don't know if it's coming through on the mic for you guys or not, but I'm getting it here, here in the headset. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We're simulating a Cirrus SR20 today. And uh, hopefully it all goes according to plan. Enable traffic here so I can see what's going on. Good evening. Doesn't look like pilot doesn't look like pilot edge is sending traffic. I probably have to update a setting for it to do that. Let me see if I can fix that real fast. I updated today RAM in the PC. And like all things with PCs, and in particular all things with Windows wasn't as straightforward as one had hoped it was going to be. All that said, it is uh, up and running. It seems to be doing a correct job. Yeah, that should be sending traffic. I'm just not seeing it on ForeFlight. Sometimes ForeFlight doesn't pick it up. It's part of the part of the deal. Not sure why. Has me in the right lo location. That's good. So uh, I can see the chat here on the tablet. Sound is good. Views also ready to go. Awesome. <laughs> wow, from Alaskan, from Seattle. Cool. Uh, okay, so uh, we're just going to tune in, do what we would normally do here, do a little VFR flight, and it's uh, again, it's the where it all began flight uh, because this is the first time I ever really started to get serious about aviation was when I got onto Pilot Edge and uh, made this first flight. Now back then the intro flight, uh, and it still is the intro flight, is from L52 to San Luis Obispo, uh, but that only takes about 10 minutes. So I thought we'd do this little flight uh, today, which will take about an hour, and uh, look at some of the scenery, and we've got real world weather running with uh, Active Sky XP. The sim seems to be performing okay with the new memory in it. I've been having these crashes when streaming. Uh, it could be a memory issue. It could be a video card issue. I hope not. Video card is plenty healthy and strong to run this, but whether or not it'll actually do it and do it well, not quite, not quite sure. So, uh, what do we do when we're flying non-towered? Uh, first thing we do is we make sure we know where we're going, and we uh, dial up the Oceano METAR, which is uh, going to be on one one eight point three seven five.
And I hear nothing. Okay. Sometimes the stuff isn't current. It's showing me having COM2. Let me see if I can pick up San Luis Obispo. There's been so much stuff that got messed up and just when I changed things around today, I have no idea what's actually going to work. Six zero. Huh? Wind zero two okay, zero we're picking that up. Hello, Texas. Okay. So they just aren't simulating the ATIS for uh, L-52, the AWAS for L-52, but I've got the METAR here and it tells me that it's 070 at 11. Visibility 10 miles, clear below 12,000, and altimeter 3007, and 070 at 11 knots. My barometer continues to reset for some strange reason. Okay, we're squawking VFR, so that's all good. Let's get ourselves dialed in here. We're going to go L52 to actually got a little waypoint here we're going to pick up along the way so that we avoid these mountains to uh, WYNNR and then to L88 and I'll cross feed this over here so you guys can see it in just a second New Kayama, and then on the way up, we're going to go to Pozo. P O Z O E. And then into K S B P. Okay, we'll cross fill that down here and do a quick map check. Looks right, you guys should be able to see that on the stream. Uh, uh, Javier, I have done all the cat flights from Pilot Edge and all of the I flights, all the I ratings as well, except for I don't think I've completed the final one yet, but um, I've completed, uh, completed them all. And uh, they're worth completing. It's uh, it's a great way to learn. Okay, so now we'll uh, switch over to 122.7 here, which is our CTAF. And I might just take a quick glance at the Pilot Edge map here, just to see if there's anybody around since I'm not seeing traffic. That's okay, we'll just have to view and avoid, which is what we would do in the real world. Uh, there's somebody at San Luis, and there's somebody at New Kayama, and there's somebody at San Luis Obispo, oh, and there's somebody at, yeah, there's, and that's me. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. All right, so uh, winds are uh, 0, 07, 0 to 11. Here we have... 1129, so we're going to depart 1 1. Let's get that heading bug set in. And we're going to fly out there at a nice VFR altitude of, uh, let's call it 6,500 if we can get up that high. We've got some mountains along the way, that'll give us some room. And uh, look at the profile view real quick. That all looks fine. That looks safe. Okay, so we'll make a call here at New Kayama, or at Oceano. Well, we're at Oceano, right? And we're on the correct CTAF frequency, which is 122.7. Oceano traffic, Cirrus 15 Julie Golf is taxiing to 11 from the ramp, Oceano. That looks awfully stuttery to me on the front screen. Doesn't it look stuttery to you guys? 
Let me just adjust. It looks fine on the side screens, but it doesn't look great on the front screen. And let me just knock down the settings one notch here. Yeah, that helps. Frame rates are good though. And out the side windows it looks great. I don't know why it would render strange on one monitor. Okay. That was not the longest taxi in the world. Quick run up. Just so we stay in good habits. 1700. Load up. Fuel pump mixture. Load up all the electronics. Electronics are working. The ammeter would be loading correctly. We'd be seeing the right charge on the batteries. Take beacon landing. Taxis off. Keep the fuel pump on. Go left mags. Make sure our drops within 100 or so. Go back up to right mag or default both mags, and go right. Make sure our drops okay. It is. I can see my tachometer here as well as here. That all looks good. Do our final pre-flight. Okay, we've got control check. That's all working well. Flaps 50. Fuel pump is on. We're on both. Both switches are on. Landing light is set. Mixture is full rich. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Hey Cubs, welcome to welcome to Florida, welcome to Naples. Oceana traffic, Cirrus 15 Julie Golf departing 1-1, one, one. we'll be departing straight out to the east, Oceana. This is the free Oceano for X-Plane that you can get from Orbix, by the way. It's pretty good, it's got some weird little things, some of the stripes aren't straight, things like that, but that might be what it looks like in the real life, as far as, far as I know. power. They were 50% by 50%. 66. Now that's performing fine. speed come up. And now I can bring up the flaps. Pitch for 96. Oceana traffic 15 Julie Golf is on the departure leg off 11 and uh, departing to the east final call Oceana. Okay. We're on our way, 400 feet, caps available, 500 actually. We're going to go up to uh, 6,500, so let's plug that. Uh, the clamp I'm using, it's from GoFlight. It's from my go flight. Sorry about that. Okay, direct. And we can take a little bit of a look around here. I have seen the honeycomb yoke and throttle assembly. I, I, uh, it looks good. I've heard people say good things about it. I mean, that's what matters, is that people think it works well for them. That's the only thing that would matter to me. Okay. We're climbing. We can't see any traffic. So we're going to keep our eyes outside the airplane.
Uh oh. That's weird. Let's see if we can fix that. Yeah, that's better. And we're going up to 6,500 feet. And let's uh, pick up. Let's pick up. Uh, let's listen to San Luis. Uh, we've got Los Angeles Center, Santa Barbara departure on 127.725. That'd be fun to listen to. 127.725. San Luis, uh, towers on 124.0, we'll listen to that too. Of course, COM1 would be the right name to listen to for that. See if we can get anybody on Pilot Edge talking. Anybody. San Luis. Turn two three. Two point three. All right, well we're getting back. Burbank Tower, Diamond One Three Four, Mike Whiskey, clear runway eight at D seven. There we go. Tax, look for request taxi to Millionaire. Trust you guys can hear that okay. LA Center is 119.05. Roger, thank you. For Mike Whiskey. Okay. Yeah, Cubs, I'm glad, glad you like your Yoko. I do too, for sure. It's interesting. I do feel like I'm getting stutters not smooth out of the front monitor, but the side monitors look perfect. And I'm not quite sure why that would be happening. Um, I might check my display settings here real quick get ourselves trimmed, first of all. And then uh, there's a couple things I want to talk about. Since this is not an IFR flight, I've got a little more. That all looks normal. <laughs> uh, let's try to figure it out. We lost our front view. <laughs> That's not going according to plan. Uh-huh. says it's there. I can see it. Oh, I know what it's doing. Sorry. <laughs> this is not what you want to have happen when you're actually trying to fly the real airplane in the real world. Uh, let's disconnect the display and then reconnect it. Negative one one nine point one nineteen one. Huh. Well, that might change the. That might, change the uh, that might change our stream here, guys. <laughs> we lose the front screen. Oh man. I don't know what's going on.
I'm, I'm troubleshooting, troubleshooting as fast as I can. 267 Hotel Papa, Las Vegas Tower, uh, wind 0205, only one on a right for land. I don't know why I did that. It sees it, says, says it's there, it says it's on. Base, runway 24, no, it doesn't want to do that. Zero zero at, uh, point actually, we're, um, uh, so what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm disconnecting, connecting displays, and doing all this stuff to try the visuals come back on the front screen. Base, uh, you just can, uh, and it's not doing it. Runway six, that's, that's runway, the runway six. start the whole thing over again if that's what's going to help us do what we're trying to do. Four's over there now. Five's over there now. That's one. That's three. So number two is the one in front. There's some hotel pop taxi parking at the Tango Whiskey Hotel. Monitor ground 121.1. Okay. Uh, correction, monitor ground 121.9. I, it's, it's it's the strangest thing. I don't know why it would do that. Everything's all ski wampus now here in terms of my views and everything else. Uh, let me go into, into X-Plane and see if I can get it to to change it up. But this is not what you guys came here to see. So I'm in the monitor settings right now. That all looks like it's working the way it should. John Wayne Clarence, November 8665, Romeo. Let's try this. Clarence. What I'll do is I'll just reload back it. come and start from scratch but yeah I, I've got nothing up there absolutely nothing I don't know any reasonable troubleshooting that would Thank fix it uh, no the projectors um, what's your aircraft type the projectors working uh, I didn't because I changed because it gave me uh, the hourglass I changed the uh, we're going to discon from pilot edge so that we're not messing up any airspace there and uh, I um, I uh, just tried to change the scaling of uh, the graphics on it because it was it was stuttering to my eye. So I'm going to quit this flight. We're going to quit X-Plane. We'll keep streaming. We're going to quit X-Plane. And um, yeah, see there, the screen's the screen's working. So <laughs> I heard a huge bird crap. Yes. Um, yeah, no kidding, Sydney. I, that would be a good time for uh, IFR flight rules. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to reboot. Shouldn't take very long. If you guys stick with me, we'll just start from scratch again, because this is, again, it's a short flight. Uh, but I'm curious to see, you know, why it was doing that. I can see that X-Plane is not seeing it here now so if I go into uh, why is it doing that okay so if we go into um, I'll switch this over so you guys can actually see this on this side so if I go to graphics and monitor to full screen simulator great now it's set to not have the right views for the camera. So a little tutorial here. The uh, different camera angles for having the three screen view 
are basically set in these settings of, of uh, X-Plane. 57 degree view for the left screen, um, minus 90, minus 7, and 0. Front screen is actually 109. Uh, zero, because we're looking forward. Eleven pitch, eleven degrees pitch up, and because my monitor isn't perfectly straight or my projector, I give it a one degree roll rotation offset. And then this one over here is the opposite of the first one. Uh, on the heading, everything else is the same: ninety minus seven and zero. And then those two monitors should be okay. So that's good. Let's go back to main menu, new flight. We will tell L52, put ourselves GA parking, that's fine. And everything else looks good. We're in the Cirrus. Uh, let's just make sure we have full fuel. And we'll start that flight up. So, hopefully, this, uh, this will work this time around. Those are going to be the, um, I can see it's already trying to pull up the screens for the uh, GPS devices, which is good. Yeah, the got the bulb is fine. The projector is okay. It just uh, when Windows talked to it, uh, X Plane stopped talking to it. That's pretty obvious what happened. So we'll just reboot and start over. And the uh, 25 of you who are in here watching this, I very much appreciate your patience while this is going on. Okay. All right, up and running. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reposition the GPS screens, which is not hard to do, typically. And this one goes right over here. And then I didn't turn all my switches, so we want to get my switches set back to zero and make sure that's all set. And I can do that by looking. And so you guys know, if you're making a cockpit like this, I always leave enough of the panel in view or in the actual airplane file after I modify it by deleting things I don't want to see so that I can do things like run switches and stuff when I need to. Okay, so uh, same verse, second verse, same as the first. Let's uh, see how this goes. Battery, fuel pump, strobe, power, alternators, avionics, nav lights. I need to rerun the software that talks to the radios here. It takes a second to wake up. Yeah, re you're exactly right. Reboots and troubleshooting are always expected in flight simulation. That's exactly the case. But ideally, it doesn't get there more than you have to. Okay, we'll get the radio software talking again. From it's called the G-Step Control Program, and that should. Uh, yep. So now my nav lights should turn that on and off. Means that's working. Okay, so. We're back where we were, so let's just uh, reconnect to Pilot Edge. Connected to Pilot Edge. Coming runway 20 right next to you, right. Kilo. That wasn't so painful, all things considered. I know I'm not picking up any traffic because we don't have any AI aircraft in the uh, in the sim. Let's add some real quick. I'll just add some aircraft. Add ten of them or so. And then Pilot Edge will see that aircraft and turn that into bogeys on the uh, TCOS screen, on the uh, foreflight here. We'll see it, so I'll have some sense of where the traffic is. It takes a second for it to load them up. If you're new to X-Plane, it actually loads up actual models when you do that um, the first time. But uh, for Pilot Edge, it will load up the bogeys and then add whatever models are closest to the airplane that they actually are. So now I've got some traffic, and I can see that November 1-9-5 Romeo Hotel is south of me, uh, doing 94 knots. Okay, so 
we got the drill, we know what we're doing, so let's uh, get back to doing it. If I remember my uh, altimeter is 3007. I have this little dial on the FEP here uh, coded to turn my altimeter. We're squawking VFR, which is good. Heading bug is still 1-1, altimeter is still 6,500, that's all good to go. Fuel pump is on, and landing light, we're just going to run out there and take off like we were before, and here for Oceano, our CTAF is 122.7. Uh, gentlemen, ground runway 20 left, taxi via Alpha Hotel, Charlie Kilo. Okay. 122.7. So we'll go ahead and we'll just do this again. Oceano traffic service 15 Julie Golf is taxiing to 11 from the uh, uh, ramp. Oceano. The front screen is performing better, so that restart helped that for sure, at least to my eye. Now this traffic that's coming in, I don't. Sorry, I was looking at the. <laughs> We're just going a little fast there. Uh, he's at 3,500 feet. Don't think he's any factor. And then I don't see any other traffic in the immediate vicinity. Oceano having a traffic, Cirrus 15 Julie Golf departing 1 1 Oceano. We'll be going uh, off the down, off the departure lake due east, and uh, that'll be our final call. Okay. Flaps 50, fuel pump, control check. Nobody coming that way, nobody downrange. Full power, RPMs is expected, release the brakes. Uh, I learned this from the uh, VFR flight workshops on pilotworkshops.com with Keith Smith and uh, the gentleman who runs that. React, RPMs, engine instruments, airspeed, center line, takeoff point, which would be right here. We're 50 knots, so we're good. And then I go V, E, pitch for the right V, in this case VX for a minute. And then expect engine out. React VE. Okay, 86 knots, flaps going up. And we'll pitch for 96. It's performing better than it was, at least visually to me. Okay, so I see that some of you guys have stuck with me, so I appreciate that. view of the orchards over here. And we will direct to Weiner. That ortho scenery looks good, doesn't it? And let's switch over so we can listen to Center. And then back up the front view. Hey James, thanks. Thanks for checking in. Um, there are a lot of resources at onthegladeslope.net if you go there. Uh, there's a lot of information that will help you uh, build the sim, including plans, basic plans, and uh, a lot of lessons I learned along the way that should be helpful to you. Well, I said in the title of the chat that um, this was sort of where it all started, and um, it is where it all started because I had been uh, passionate about flight simulation for a long time. I've been passionate about airplanes for a very long time, since I was a little kid, and had thought about maybe getting my private once when I was about 35, but decided against it. And then... Um, I saw the uh, simulator like this one, uh, built by uh, the gentleman in France uh, on YouTube. Whoa. Three kilo tango contact departure. That was very interesting. I don't know what that was. Wake turbulence, maybe? I don't know what that is. Autopilot's disconnected. 
that? Scott, one, two, three, kilo, tango, so got a departure radar contact. I don't know what that is. Wake turbulence, shear. Settling down, though. Maybe it's simulating wind shear. I'm not quite sure what's it, what it is doing, but it is a fucking bronco right now. Huh. That was interesting. Maybe the weather just updated and it loaded new winds. That could be. It's showing 45 at 10 knots. That's not too bad. So we'll just keep going up. But it's moving us around a lot. All right, well, that just makes it interesting. We'll just say interesting. I can always turn on the autopilot to manage the climb and the route while we're doing this. But we'll hand fly it for a minute. Anyway, so I'd seen that sim, and I decided I was going to build one like it. So I started doing that. I built this sim, and I was having a great time with it. And then um, it wasn't long uh, after I had started uh, flying in this simulator that I started... I heard about Pilot Edge and you know, had great recommendations for it. And uh, let's do this real quick. See how the autopilot handles it. <laughs> Not very well. That's interesting. Yeah, maybe it's just, it might be wind shear. I don't know what's going on. It was fine, but it's obviously a turbulence thing. So maybe we've got severe turbulence. Let me see if there's an air med up for that. Yeah, turbulence. But it's turbulence 18,000 to 39,000. So that doesn't really apply to us, but... Uh, okay, I guess one thing I can do is I can go into the active sky settings and dial down the turbulence just a little bit, because that's not quite realistic. Maximum turbulence, the general turbulence from zero to higher values increase the realized turbulence effect. Okay, let's uh, turn that down to 50. Let's see if that chills us out a little bit. I don't mind a little turbulence as long as it's realistic. Okay, so um, so anyway, I had uh, started flying in this thing and uh, finally found Pilot Edge and thought that looked really intriguing. So I decided... Uh, wow, okay. Hey, Runway, it's good to see you. Contact, uh, so I... Uh, decided that uh, I was going to trial Pilot Edge, and one night I went down and got up my One, two, three, kilo, kilo, Courage and loaded in for the first flight from rating, Oceano uh, to San Luis Obispo, Victor 23, Victor 23, and uh, I remember how terrified I was to key the mic for the first time, but I went ahead and did it, and, um, and made the flight, and uh, made the landing, and was feeling pretty proud of myself, and then didn't really listen to the okay. ground controller and taxied before I was given clearance to taxi, and I was uh, quickly and appropriately scolded. And, but I remember going upstairs and saying to my wife, you know, that that gives me, that was really interesting, it was real, I had to learn how to really do it, I had to learn enough about the airspace to do it. And you know, this was clearly before all the cat ratings and everything else. Um, hey James, uh, yeah, well, it, it's it's working for me on the Cirrus, and it works for me generally on uh, the 172 also. It's not perfect, but I can go like heading nav mode with it, and uh, some of it depends on which autopilot you're actually simulating. You can now simulate several different autopilots if you open the plane in Plane Maker. You can pick if it's an STAC 55 or if it's a King or whatever it's going to be. So, um, so anyway, I was like, wow, you know, that gave me a lot of confidence, and I thought, you know, if I could do that, maybe I should try a, um, uh-oh. Uh oh. Let's just give it a second here and see what happens. There we go. Maybe I should try a um, a discovery flight. So uh, I got permission <laughs> to
to go do that, and uh, I did a discovery flight and loved it. Uh, is Pilot Edge, question from the chat, is Pilot Edge SoCal and uh, only? No, it's, uh, well, there's the entire SoCal ARTCC, which goes from basically Monterey over to Las Vegas down to Phoenix and over to San Diego. And it has every Bravo, Delta, and Charlie, Charlie airpo uh, airport towered uh, 11 hours a day or 12 hours a day, whatever it is, uh, in that service control area. But there's also the Western U.S. expansion, which if you pay the extra money to get, uh, has all the Bravos, all the Charlies, and a lot of the big Deltas. Uh, really, everything west of the Rocky Mountains and a little further east of that. So basically, the western, the entire, the entire western United States. So it's a massive service territory, and I find it's uh, great. Uh, it's worth doing, and it's worth having, and uh, it's uh, the thing I love about it is it's it's real world in terms of its uh, its application and the procedures and the rules that you're expected to follow. Okay, well there goes our altitude, 6,500. See if it'll actually try to hold us there. Looks like it's trying to. If not, I'll just hand fly it. So, uh, so Pilot Edge, I think, is a great addition to any serious uh, simulator. And if you're a real-world pilot, it's essential. I think if you're going to be spending time playing around in the sim or training the sim, you should be doing so with real-world air traffic control and Pilot Edge gives it to you. Okay, we can fuel pump off now. Landing light is off. We're top of climb. We continue to lean our mixture. We'd be at about 2,500 RPMs here. And about 8.9 gallons per hour in the airplane I fly. So, um, so I did that on Pilot Edge, and I took that discovery flight, and I was having a good time, and uh, kept with it, and ended up eventually last January. Uh, <laughs> that's the turn for the uh, autopilot. I almost tipped us over. Just a little 30 degree bank. So um, it was. Uh, so I ended up getting my private pilot's license, and then uh, I just stuck with that. And I'm happy to say uh, that on Tuesday, last Tuesday, I got my instrument rating. So I passed my check ride, and I now have got my instrument rating, and uh, I'm looking forward to flying in the IFR system and, um, and enjoying uh, that part of pilotage and uh, being a pilot. And the reason why I say this is the was the first step is because if I hadn't loaded on the pilot edge, I, I'm pretty sure that not, none of that would have happened. Negative one, two, five, radio. Okay, so let's start thinking descent now. Uh, we're That's correct. 26 miles out. New Kiamna is at 2,200 feet. On departure, maintain the affordable below 3,000. We're at 6,800 feet. Our pattern altitude is uh, 3,200 feet. So let's say that we got to lose 3,500 feet, 500 feet a minute. That's going to take uh, seven minutes. Or I could go by thirds and say, okay, it's 3,500 feet. Uh, and uh, about 30% of that is going to be. Ten miles. So, uh, well, pretty soon here we'll start to cut the throttle and start bringing ourselves down. We've got traffic at 1,100 feet below, but it's quite a bit out there. Eight miles, no factor right now. So once we're over this ridge, we'll uh, we'll start dropping some altitude. In the meantime, I'm going to hand fly us, which is what I'd be doing in the real world anyway. Six zero Papa Sierra, Long Beach Clinics. I can barely hear you, but you're on request. Okay. It is turbulent, that is for sure. It just got hazy, too.
Um, my wife gets sick in the sand, so no, she doesn't ever fly in it. Uh, it doesn't make her feel good. Fly runway heading until 500 feet, then fly heading 200. Right director Seal Beach, then the Coast Papa 36 tech route. Okay. Maintain 2,000. Correction, maintain 3,000. Expect 5,000. Wonder Miss Hefty. If we wanted to do Parker descent planning, we can also do that in our E6B. Squawk. Well, I should do it here. There's a unit in this also. We can say, okay, our ground speed is uh, 165 knots. We're sort of moving along here. We're indicated 6,300. And we want to be at 3,200. And the fixed distance is uh, 18 nautical Other miles. The coast. 473 Papa, feet a minute. Test, uh, tech route. Radar vector Steel Beach. And then the 36 tech time route. for us to do that here right about now. So we're over this. So I can go ahead. I'll cut the power. We'll go back down to 50%. That'll I'll start taking us down and hopefully get us out of the turbulence. I never saw that traffic down there. Uh, I'll give you guys a view here real quick. There's a view out this side. And then our view out the front. I don't understand the question. getting a little more stable as we get down here. Okay, so New Kaima's right pattern for 10. I assume we're going to be right landing on 10. So let's go ahead and bug that now. One zero. And if it's going to be right pattern, we can go ahead and put that in. Using four flight. So it's easier to visualize. Select our runway, one zero. I won't go straight in. I'm not a big fan of straight in entries, Our even if the place is empty. Uh, Niner, eight, Mike, Los Center. So we'll fly off to the west, or to the north, and come in on the, on the uh, well, no, we'll fly to the south and come in so we can make two right hand turns to land on 10. That's what we'll do. Uh, the distance now is, uh, Center, uh, About 15 uh, miles. Looking for the airport. Uh, yes, I did the check ride in the Cirrus. That is a affirmative. Uh, uh, we're going to New Kayama. <laughs> this traffic, there, this, uh, this uh, turbulence and stuff is taking us all over the place. All right, so we're going to switch over to New Kiama here is uh, 122.9. And we'll make a first call so people know we're coming. What are we, 12 miles out? We'll wait another two miles. Okay, and again, we're going to make for right traffic into one zero, so we're going to go to the west, coming on a 45 degree angle. This hazard alert keeps bugging me. I appreciate the update, but we're doing okay. 1,000 feet to go to pattern altitude. Still bumpy. Uh, this Cirrus is the one from Jason Chandler. It's... Um, it's, uh, I think, f flies probably the best. It's, the numbers aren't quite right for the airplane that I fly, but they're not terrible. 8,000 okay, feet to go to pattern altitude. We're still coming down. We want about 50. In this plane, we want about 60% power. It would be 50% power in the one I fly for the pattern. We continue to cruise. Uh, ground speed 165 knots. We're going to have to slow down here pretty soon. Okay, we're going to bug 3,200 feet. That's pattern altitude. 10 miles out, we'll make a call. New Kayama Cirrus 15 Julie Golf is 3,810 miles uh, due uh, 
West of the field, we're going to be maneuvering to the south for a 45 degree entry right traffic in 1 0, Yukaima. Okay, let's go this way. 600 feet to go. And again, I'm looking for the airport. And again, we're still experiencing an awful lot of turbulence. In particular, the one thing I don't like about this Cirrus is it seems to be really sensitive to up and down drafts. It really seems to rock it up and rock it down. Uh, there's the some of the town over there. Looks like our turbulence has chilled out a little bit. That's good. Even on the numbers, that's right. I wish I could figure out how to turn the hazard alert alert off in this thing right now. Better to know about hazards than not know about hazards. And I'm not quite sure what the bar bar what the barometer is here. We can see what the closest reading is. Get trimmed here. Since New Kayama doesn't have a uh, a METAR. Okay, there we go. We'll hang out here about 3,500 feet. New Kaima traffic, Sirius 15 Julie Gulf is four miles, uh, four miles southwest, 3,700. We're going to be maneuvering to come in on the 45 for 10. New Kaima. Yeah. This hazard advisor, <laughs> this hazard advisor is driving me nuts in four flight. Let's see if I can find a way to turn it off. speed 140 knots see if that turns it off for me okay there's the airport coming up over here on this side Just going to be making a left and then two rights. Let's get us down to 3,200 feet, which would be pattern altitude here. An eye on those mountains. No, we're just going to do a touch and go. Okay, so we're now two miles due south. New Kaima traffic, Sirius 15 Julie Golf, 3,800, two miles due south. We're turning again on the 45 for 10 right traffic, New Kaima. This is X plane 11. I think it's the updrafts from those mountains. I think that's what is that is. I think that's mountain updrafts. It's okay, turbulence is part of the game. Not quite maneuvering and handling it realistically, but that's okay. New Kaima traffic, Sirius 15 Julia Golf is uh, 3,600 on the 45 for uh, right traffic in 10. New Kaima. Okay, that's the airport right in front of us. I'm going to get us slowed down here quite a bit because we're moving. And 
3200 is pattern altitude. Newcomer traffic series 145 Julie Golf is joining the uh, right downwind for 10 Newcomer. That's so all slowed down here. We might extend this downwind just a little bit so we can slow down enough. There's the airport out this view. It's all right, we'll just work it the right way. Okay, we can go for flaps 50. Start coming down, we'll just turn to the numbers. New Kaima traffic, Sears 15 Julia Golf is turning to the numbers, right traffic 10, New Kaima. Dump final flaps, a little high. Okay, one thing about the SR20 is when you cut the power, it sinks like a stone. Speed's looking good. 90 knots. Trim, 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 trim. Newcomer traffic 15 Julie Golf is final 10. We're going touch and go. 86 knots, it's just about right where we want to be. One thing about this airplane is it always hops. Flaps 50, full power. Well, I guess it hits that, it hit that little bump, it wanted to fly. All right. Your kind of traffic, 15 Julie Golf is on the go, 10. Okay, let her speed up. The flaps up. And get ourselves retrimmed. I didn't have my mixture all the way rich. That's a mistake. That's why you have checklists. Especially on a touch and go, I could get you killed. All right, we're 400 feet above the ground. It's right traffic, so make our crosswind and get out of here. New kind of traffic, 15 Julie Golf is turning right crosswind from 10. Yeah, lots of places the land now is right. Okay. Pozo, next waypoint. And we'll just go up to maybe 3,500 feet this time. Newcomer traffic 15 Julie Golf is on the downwind for 10 departing to the west. Newcomer. Got some clouds here we'll want to miss. And we can even just VFR up, follow the valley up, follow the Kaima River all the way, and then come over to uh, San Luis. Uh, let's see how high I'm going to want to be. There's 3,500 right there. Why she's still stable. Thirty five hundred is not going to do it for us. We should go up to forty five or fifty five for hazards. There's our turbulence. Let's do 
doing it again. Just <laughs> crazy. All right. Well, at least it's consistent. We'll keep that going for us. We'll see if we can get up to 65. What were we before? So I think we were 65 before. It should have been 55. But I'm so used to filing IFR, not remembering odds and evens as much as I used to. Okay. Um, can you get max RPM on this? Uh, this isn't the V-Flight Air Cirrus. This is the Cirrus from Jason Chandler. Um, the V-Flight I've flown in VR a lot. I haven't flown it in this a lot because I can't get the cabin to be situated well enough. I can't, get, I can't get rid of the objects easily enough to make it so that it looks good out the windows. Downwind checks, yep. Uh, but I like that V flight in uh, I like that V flight in VR. The problem is is it it uses that strange modified G1000. You, it makes it really difficult to enter flight plans into it. I find it's not easy to use for IFR stuff at all. I don't know why they don't they don't just use the the default G1000 from uh, X plane. Okay, 11 minutes to Pozo, and then just a few minutes to SBP after that. Let's go back over and listen to Setter. Bronco, which is what we have. Okay, fuel pump off, landing light is done. Bring us back to about 75% power, 2500 RPM is actually where I would go. As we bonk all over the air. And I would lean us back to about 8.9, 10 or 11 gallons. Let's see. We'll go down to about, given our altitude, we'll go back to about 9.5 gallons per hour. Okay. That'll keep the, air, the engine rigid or lean of peak. And we'll keep bouncing along. Hi right, from the UK. Good to see you. Yeah, Colin, I'm, I'm with you. So it's a shame. I mean, there are now 7,000 Cirruses in the general aviation fleet. Uh, we need better Cirruses for the virtual community, uh, right down departure. especially if you want to practice real world. Uh, and very, and very little with the Abaddon package. I mean, I've got this thing set uh, just because I want to be able to look at Abaddon, which is what I fly in the real world. And I've modified it pretty extensively with um, uh, Air Manager to do things like have the Emax engine information and the waypoints correct, and, and it looks a lot like the display that I have in the real airplane. Okay, ground speed 172 knots. Seems unusually f high, given that we've got a uh, 11 knot headwind, but I'm not quite sure what the winds are doing around here right now. Okay, so let's, uh, while we're moving along here, let's prep for San Luis. I keep having my barometric pressure reset, which bums me out, and I haven't found out the cause of that bug. Okay, so San Luis, ATIS is going to be 120.6. I've already got it in there. And uh, Trower is 124.0. I'm going to dial that up. Traffic over there, 2,400 feet below. Looks like uh, military traffic. I don't see them. Kind of a cool view out this window with the haze, the low clouds. 
Where do I fly in the UK? Uh, oh, maybe you're talking about Cineboy. Uh, I have the UK package from Orbix. You know, it sure looks great, the southern UK. I haven't used it very much, but I should. We continue to bounce all over the place. We're just going to follow the road here. Contact departure, 164 hotel. Yeah, the chat is a little laggy. That's a... That's a Gmail issue, or a uh, Gmail issue, a Google issue. YouTube. Okay, well we're hovering around 4,500 feet, depending on what the winds are doing. We're on our way to Pozo. We're actually going to not fly direct, because we're going to stay away from those mountains. And uh, follow the, the road here a little bit and then uh, over the top into San Luis here in a minute. And uh, San Luis pattern altitude is 1,200 feet. I wish, I wish uh, you guys would pay attention. <laughs> Just because you, you transmitted and an APC comes back and says, who was that that, that uh, said they were going to taxi, doesn't mean ATC is talking to you. It was sent to the detail. Who was calling for taxi? Uh, who was the aircraft calling for that's taxi? A really, he's a really great right. controller uh, for Pilot Edge. I know some sometimes the controllers can get a little short of, pa short of patience, but I don't uh, blame them. They're trying to work at a real-world level of... Uh, uh, of uh, discipline, and uh, they're also trying to teach people, and that's not an easy, that's not an easy ask. Thank you, Texas Parking, via Alpha, and Alpha Cat 2. Have a good day. Weather just reloaded. So far, so good with the new memory. So far, so good with the stream. Uh, I expect every stream to crash right now. This one still might. Might be trying to do it right now. And now it has us flying directly at the ground. We're going to get a little altitude going for us here. Yeah, this turbulence is something else. I can imagine what it's rendering it like at 18,000 feet where there's actually an air met for it. <laughs> Barely hear that guy. So, yep, so the instrument rating is done and I'm going to start working on my commercial. And uh, I've got a fair number of the time requirements done. Uh, I obviously have to do all the educational requirements. I'll be happy to be back in the valley again so we don't have all this turbulence. But Active Sky is doing a good job. I mean, as soon as we went over a hill, it, uh, the haze just changed, didn't it? As soon as we went over a hill, it, uh, it gave me this and the updrafts. It made it a lot more turbulent, so that's, that's good. That's what it would be like. Charlie to parking, and, uh, here. All right. So over in that valley is where San Luis is going to be. So we've got a little bit more mountain flying to do. We had a problem here. We would uh, pull the chute, uh, fly down in one of these valleys to about 1,000, 1,500 feet, and pull the chute. We would not worry about an off-field landing over these mountains for one second. I don't know if you can see my climb and descent indicator, my vertical speed indicator, going up and down like crazy. Uh, 
Uh, the SIM is performing very smoothly. Uh, I went from 16 gig of RAM to 64, and it seems to have made a big difference. A uh, difference, uh, not my frame rate so much as, although they're holding up quite well. Um, but in terms of just the smoothness, I'm not noticing stutters really. It's obviously not going to the page file at all. It's doing everything from RAM, and that's good. Yeah, it looks good. The haze looks good. It it looks like the real thing. That's for sure. Um, sometimes I use the I up the contrast a little bit so it, it's a little brighter for you guys. I didn't do that today, so if the screen's a little dark, my apologies. Okay, we're uh, 20 miles from San Luis. up that taxi diagram on the other page. One two four point zero, we've got in, let's get the weather. San Luis Co RG and L information uniform. Twenty two hundred Zulu weather. Wind zero eight zero and one. We should be getting the pilot edge more than ten. Weather, I wonder if we just disconnected. Altimeter 3006. Arriving runway 29. Departing runway 29. Advise on initial contact. You have uniform. Okay, he's giving us uniform. Let's hear it one more time. San Luis Co. RGNL information uniform. 2200s in the weather. 080 and 10. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 23. Dew point 2. Altimeter 3006. Okay. Arriving runway 29. Departing runway 2. No, we're still uh, departure. We're in contact. Runway okay, we've got down. the ATIS. We know that we're going to go down to uh, 1,200 feet. And it sounds like they are probably Vector giving us. Vector flighting zero nine or zero vector Victor twenty three. Uh, two nine or so. Let's go ahead and start to visualize that. He'll probably give us straight in rather than a pattern entry. Okay. And we're actually sort of setting up for that on this angle that we're on. We won't call him until we're closer to the. Delta airspace. That looks awfully real out there, man, with the ocean and uh, the sun. Down there is Oceano, which is where we started the flight, and where all this started for me. Looks like he's got one person flying around over there. And uh, I'm just sort of on an angle to enter an appropriate straight-in runway landing for 2 9 -er. of the scenery here for you. Okay. We continue to get bumped around, but that's okay. Let's bug 290, which is going to be our runway heading. Let's just see what it is exactly. It's, uh, yeah, 290 on the nose. And, uh, when we're 10 miles out, we'll give them a call. We're cruising, we're doing 150 knots. So we're going to come in and we're going to fly into that valley and go straight in. The airport is actually sort of right down there. Okay, let's descent checklist. Fuel pump is on, landing light is on. Make sure we go ahead and keep it where it is for now because we're at 5,400 feet. I'm looking forward to us not bucking around anymore. Let's go ahead and slow us down a little bit because we are cruising. We're doing 170 knots in these downdrafts. We don't want to stress the airframe. And when we're 10 miles, we'll give them a call. We're going to tell them that we're 10 miles uh, southeast. Okay. 
San Luis Tower, Sirius 15, Juliet Golf is 5,000. We're 10 miles southeast. We're bound for a full stop. All 5, Juliet Golf, San Luis Tower, report 3 miles straight in. Uh, actually, disregard that. Uh, report midfield uh, right downwind, long way, 1 1. Okay, midfield right downwind, 1 1 for uh, 15, Juliet Golf, thanks. Okay, that changes the plan. Let me just visualize that now. Got somebody overflying the field and doing pattern work, it looks like. So select our runway, 1-1. One, one. And that's fine. Anyone who wants us to make right, right traffic. Mike, so we're going to come in on this side of it approved. and report midfield for that. So, okay. Guess what? Let's start coming down now. We're going to get out over these mountains. Power back to 50. 6182 Golf Contact, Fullerton Tower, 1100.1, Squawk via 4. And I can see the airport in front of us. It's right there, and there's a little hill there that you fly over when you're doing right traffic to make for downwind onto 1-1. Uh, one one. We're going to be right, though, so we're going to fly on this side. And hopefully the winds are going to chill out here for a second. Okay, 3,700 feet coming down, 12, we've got 25 to go. Buck around. And we're really cruising. Go we're going slow uh, way down here. Enter a uh, left base from way six to land. So we're going to be going about 190 knots when we get to midfield. 1,700 feet to go for pattern altitude. I don't know why it's flying so fast today. It is cruising. Maybe it's just the way that active sky is rendering the winds, but... It's ridiculous how fast it is. Okay, mixture full ridge, fuel pump is on, landing light is on. Full is tank. And we're coming down to pattern altitude and we're going 100 miles an hour. Faster than we'd like, but that's okay. We'll just take the throttle out, let her calm, calm down, and tell him when we're at midfield. 200 feet to go. Frames are sort of hurting, but we're doing okay. Slowing down, it's like flying the Mooney. Okay, we're midfield. San Luis, 15 Julie Golf is midfield, right traffic 1 1. 15 Julie Golf, runway 1 1, Cudland, wind 0 6 0 at 1 1, gust 1 9 -er. Okay, Cudland 1 1, 15 Julie Golf. Okay, let's get here. The right pattern altitude, there's a threshold. Power 20 in this plane, about 33, flaps 50, and start flying her downhill. Let her slow down. Okay, we'll make our turn. Look at the chat in a second. We're gonna act like we have a sterile cockpit here. Full flaps. Plane out this side. Or the, you can see the airport out this side. And again, I'm still figuring out in this flight model where the right power settings are, but they're somewhere around 35, 40 percent. There's your prophecy here. I'm not sure why you've turned. You should be on a 0, 9, or 0 heading. We're a little slow. Pitch her down a little bit. 
There's zero a little high, and that's okay. The Joint Vector 23, you're told to fly heading 090, vectors for Vector 23. I was working the trim switch so much in that, uh, in that, uh, in that weather that I've got it uh, out of trim on the roll. A little crosswind here, 85 knots, it's about right, let's lower down a little bit more. Tell my frames are slowing down too. rudder, dip the wing, oh we hit a little hard, but s solid landing, the braking in this thing is ridiculous, all right, flaps coming up, and echo. We'll just go straight ahead. San Luis Tower, 15 Julie Golf, clear of 1-1 Alpha Echo. We will go straight ahead. 15 Julie Golf, take straight ahead to park and have a good day. Thanks, you do. Okay. So there you go. L-52 to L-88 to KSB. P, that's the first two cat flights on uh, Pilot Edge. And again, uh, did that uh, just to kind of recognize that it was those first couple okay, flights that gave me the confidence to get my pilot's license. Where do we want to park? Let's park over here. And uh, and my instrument rating. All told, things the sim performed well. No crashes. That makes me very happy. That's the main test. The new memory seemed to work okay. Securing checklist. Nav lights uh, stay on until we're off. Fuel pump off. Make sure I lay back, throttle back. And avionics, electronics, master, and magnetos. Okay, so there you go. That was uh, our quick little flight. Thanks everybody for watching. And uh, I'm glad everything uh, stuck together and didn't crash. Um, do I talk to myself uh, when flying solo in the real world? Uh, David, sometimes. Uh, I do. I do my call-outs out loud, for sure. Because um, that's what I would do if I had somebody with cock If I was doing cockpit management and had somebody in there playing with me, I would be doing the call-outs out loud. So I tend to do anything that I would verbalize with someone in the airplane when there is not someone in the airplane. Um, but I, there I verbalize it so that um, you guys who are watching the stream have something to listen to instead of just watching me. All right, everybody. Thanks. Appreciate you. And uh, I'll see you on the next stream.